What is going on guys, it's Sakili here and welcome back to another one of my videos. On today's video we're going to be looking at the top 10 patron gods for Gods of Olympus. So if you enjoy Gods of Olympus or Brawl Stars or Frag Pro Shooter or any other stuff I do including live streams, then consider subscribing and clicking that bell notification so you don't miss any of my future uploads. So with the introduction of patron gods way back when, which gives you the ability to make one particular god out of your possible 10 gods, like a super god, I've basically broken this down into obviously the top 10, but also there's like three tiers. There's the tier three is basically gods that you don't really ever want to make patrons because they just are not good enough to be patron gods. You've got a tier two, which is sort of like, they're like fun gods to use as patrons now and again, if you're getting bored. And then you've got tier one, which are basically your main ones that you want to be choosing going forward in the game for especially the advanced levels, the ones that you need to have as your patrons if you want to win those real tough fights. So without further ado, let's go straight into the top 10 video. So coming in at number 10 in last place is Zeus. The first gold that you get in the game, and he's always been, in my opinion, the weakest one. He's got Chain Lightning and Lightning Storm, and even with him as a patron, they aren't boosted enough to make any real difference. He still goes down really quick. He's got no shield, nothing to uh, help defend himself with, and he just drops like a fly. His only redeeming feature is the fact that he's got a sweet ultimate, which is his slow time, but that is nothing to do with being a patron because the ultimates aren't affected. So that's why he is in 10th and last place. In at number nine, we have Athena. Now, Athena is a really good god, but as a patron, she is definitely tier three. You don't want to be using her at all because her Aegis Shield, even if she's being a patron, is still going to have a, at least a four second window of opportunity where the shield is not going to be used and she's going to get taken out just as quick, whether she's a patron or not a patron. Now, the Summon Hot Plights is an interesting one because she gets, as a patron, 50% more Hot Plights than she would normally get. Now, this is quite cool. At lower levels, you get to see some people using Athena as patron and they're having to stand back from the battle and basically spawn lots of hot plays over and over again to try and win the battle. But you will not see this at high levels, so that is why she is in at number nine. So in at number eight, we have the beautifully drawn Aphrodite. Now, she is a really good, interesting god to use, but there are better options out there. She obviously gets these boosts on her charm units and her charm building, and they make it so that basically she can charm buildings so fast that you struggle to actually use the ability as quick as she's making that ability available. So it's an interesting concept with her. You know, by all means, try her out. It could work to your favor, but I just feel that there are so much better options out there that eventually you'll find that she's basically not quite up to scratch for being a patron god. So that's the reason why she is in at number eight. Now in at number seven, we have the god Hermes. Now he is an interesting god. Now where we had Zeus, Athena and Aphrodite, those first three that I mentioned on the video, those were tier three, not really wanting to be used at all. I would suggest to stay away from those. Now this one here, Hermes, he is one of those, uh, the first one that I would say is a tier two, which is the one that you might want to dabble with. You might want to have go with him and try him out. You sometimes see him at the higher levels, not very often though, but he is definitely an interesting one to use as a patron because his abilities are pretty sweet and super awesome to be honest with you. Now his dash obviously gets a boost, he can do more damage on his dash. That's one that you might see when someone's doing some sort of solo god runs at the higher levels and the main one you might see is the haste. The haste gives all the gods in the area a speed boost and also an evasion to damage. Now obviously this gets boosted a lot with being a patron so all the gods are like even quicker, they're super quick and they're super evasive. So it's really, he is an interesting god and I suggest you at least check him out and see how he fits in with your attack strategies. So that's why I've got him in at number seven. Now in at number 
number six we have Hades. Now Hades has been around for a long time and he's one of my favourite gods in the game. He's probably the best supporting god out there with his reanimate. Now if you've got him as a patron with reanimate being used, you've got so many skeletons appearing on the battlefield to take on the opposition to protect the gods from being targeted directly which makes it one of the really good ones to use. So that's why he's tier two as well. He's one to be used to dabble with, but you probably won't see him being used as a patron at the very high levels. Now his rot, even though they say it does a lot of damage, I still feel it needs to be even more damaging because it's hardly ever used. So the skeletons, the reanimate is where it's at with this god. Definitely try him out. And that's why I've got him in at number six. Now in at number five, I've got Apollo. Now this is gonna be a controversial entry. Some people probably would think that he should be lower than this, but I definitely will tell you why I've got him at number five. Now first of all, let's take, get this out of the way. His Sun Strike ability is Utter Pants. It's the worst ability in the entire game. I've been playing this game long enough to think that I've got a good enough view and that I've got a right to make a comment on this. So yeah, his Sun Strike, rubbish, needs boosting. I've gotta say that, please boost that ability so people actually use it. I haven't seen it used in years. It's not very good. So with that being said, the Flaming Arrows is where it's at. When he's a patron, he's got it boosted. So when he's being used for like the second wave of any attacks, he can take out massive, massive amounts of troops. I've used him, I've tried him on one of my live streams and he was super fun to use. So this is the last of my tier two gods. So he's basically one that you probably won't see at the high levels at the end of the, the top end of the game, but definitely worth a try. So that's why I've got Apollo in at number five. In at number four, I have Ares. Now he is what I deem as a tier one god. Now there's four tier one gods obviously, and they are all used at the top end of the game. They are the most effective gods in the game to be used as patrons. And obviously any of these four could have been number one, but I basically put it in the order that I feel is for me, their effectiveness for the way that I do my attacking style. Now Ares, he's got this whirlwind attack and battle charge. Now the whirlwind attack, is not what he's all about with regards to being a patron. It's all about the battle charge, boosting his battle charge, boosting his attack and his health, makes him into an even more of a monster god. When he's got his bloodlust going, it's just incredible to see the amount of temples that he can sometimes take out by some of the top end players in the game. They can take out like three temples or sometimes four temples just with him. He is that that good so that is the reason why i put him in a number four a tier one you've got to at least give him a try and see how he fares for you it doesn't work very well for me but like i said the top ones use him really effectively so that's why i've got aries in at number four Now in at number three, we have Poseidon. He is a super awesome god. He's used a heck of a lot at the top level. And the reason why is clear. It's not so much his tidal wave, which is really good when being used for mono god, just to take out a single temple. But his water blast is like so powerful. It's, even though it was nerfed a little ways back, it's still super powerful. Using him as a patron with water blast and attack boosted can annihilate temples in a very short time. And that's why he's one of the most highly used gods for patron at the top level of the game right now. And that's why I've got him in at number three. In at number two, I have put Hera. Now she is an amazing god. She's probably the best god in the game. I still think she's probably the best god in the game. As a patron, I put her in at number two. She's definitely the safest god to have as a number two. If you make some mistakes, if you've got her as your patron god, she will see you through those mistakes and still get you the win. If you've got her health boosted and her revenge ability boosted, she is so difficult to take down. She takes up so much damage. She just soaks it all up and you, can get the win time and time again with her as your patron. She's used a heck of a lot at top level, maybe one of the most popular ones at top level. So that's why I placed her in at number two. 
Now the number one patron goal for my money is Arsimus. She is simply amazing. It's not about her long shot, it's about her spread shot. You, know, you put her on as patron, you get her spread shot up to the maximum and you get her attack as high as you can. And she's kicking out so much damage. She's kicking out almost at the top end 5,000 damage per arrow, 17 arrows a shot. She's just shredding bases. You can just destroy bases and troops and buildings. As long as you keep her safe, she will just melt the opposition into submission. And that is the reason why I've got her as my number one patron god. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to smash that like button because that'll be super awesome. And I'll see you next time.